Okay, so talk us through some of the factors when choosing a domain name. Okay, so it's a process that can be very, very simple or as complex as you want to make it. You can put an awful lot of thought into it. You can do massive brainstorming sessions um, or you can come up with something fairly quick. The, the two main concerns or two main issues you're going to look at. Uh, the first is what's the uh, the type of domain uh, that you're going to go for. So for example if you're going to go for something like .com, .net, .org uh, or something country specific like for Ireland .ie or for France .fr. And then the second thing you're going to look at is what's the actual domain name that you're going to use. Like what's the, the, uh, the identifier. So for example for us it's selfassemblysites.com. On deciding on which uh, top level domain or TLD like .com, .net, .org um, or the country level specific one, what I normally do is I consider is this website appealing to a generic worldwide audience or is it something that is quite local? So for example a coffee shop that is specific to one area may just want to go with a local, so for example .ie, um, like mrcoffee.ie or something like that. Or if you've got a business that's going to be worldwide, like McDonald's or uh, you know FedEx or something like that, they're going to be global in presence, then they're going to want to go for a .com. The second issue then is the actual domain name itself, as in which, uh, which kind of um, identifier you want to choose. And that, there's two ways you can go with that and the first is what's called keyword based and keyword based would be something like um, for us a keyword based domain would be uh, learn to build your own website dot com that's very very keyword based because it's got the actual keywords that somebody might be using right. to describe yeah. what your business is and then you've got on the other hand you've got uh, brandable domains and uh, the perfect example of a brandable domain is amazon dot com because amazon doesn't actually mean anything to do with selling books or selling all the stuff they do online. It's just a brand name. So the consideration there is if you go for a brand name you have to kind of build up uh, knowledge of that brand. Everybody knows now that Amazon.com is where you go to get books uh, because they've done a wonderful job with branding and, and like, everything else. And everything <laughs> else now, yeah. Right. But uh, what they did was they they, because they were there at the start and, and they provided such a, a great service, people got to know who they were and it didn't matter that they weren't called you know, booksonline.com or whatever that they could have been called, hmm. which actually uh, would now be a limiting factor. Now they sell everything. Uh, the, the, the brand name, the domain name was actually uh, it's a benefit to them. So that's that the problem with the keyword, that if you want to expand out of that it could Absolutely. limit you. Yeah. Right. If you come up with a keyword specific domain, you used to get a big benefit in Google um, in search rankings. Hmm. So um, you would, if somebody searched for whatever the keyword was, your domain would, would usually end up being number one if you were the keyword.com. Mm -hmm. Now it's not so, uh, not so much. They've really, um, they've increased the importance, they actually, they've increased the importance of other factors so that now it's it still gives you a bit of a boost but not half as much as it used to do maybe even six months ago. The second thing then I always consider with a .com or with any other kind of domain name is what's it like if somebody hears it on the radio and can they uh, if, if they hear it, it's like, it's like uh, I call it the radio test basically if somebody hears a domain name mm. said one time on the radio Will they be able to type that in without any typos or anything like that? Can they can they spell that correctly and get to that website? Is that like the, the loud bar idea? If you can say it across a loud bar and your friend can hear it. Then exactly, exactly. The that's, thing, yeah. that's a good that's a good test as well, yeah. So it's that's it it's how recognizable and how distinct is it? Like I know there's um this particular company in Ireland who are uh, advertising on the radio and uh, it's something like uh, Cube Kitchen, that's Cube with a K. And they, they, they always repeat that. And maybe that becomes quite catchy, but if they had, maybe if they, they spelled it correctly, you wouldn't need to say that. So, right. you know, right. so if somebody says it's cubekitchen.com, spell it with a K. You know, how many people are not going to get to the right website because they forgot to spell it with a K? 
Right. That's that's the thing about kind of branding and having that. Okay. So that's just another consideration in, in your... Um, uh, and what about some people put hyphens and things in the middle of words so they can get to the key words? Because you were saying before that most domains that are word, a single word or two words in the English language are all yeah. gone. Every single word in the English language is gone. Every single word in the English language, dot com, is gone. Right. Um, the, and uh, most two-word combinations. A lot of two-word combinations. Any, any, um, any good two-word combinations are gone. Right. Uh, ones that could be monetizable or useful in some way. Are there any sort of clever tricks? Like there was one I saw where something to do with the security guard training. And they went to security guard training HQ. Dot com. Oh yeah, you, you know, can, there's little. Yeah, you can do you can do a lot of that kind of stuff, and it's becoming much more common nowadays because all of the the, the names are gone. So people are doing things like um, they're putting the word use in front of it. They're putting the word my in front of it. Right. They're putting e the letter e or the letter i. The letter <laughs> i in front of things was really common back around two thousand. That's so, a bit uh, um, web. 1.0, is it? Yeah, there, there was, I think there was a couple It's also of using numbers now, it's gone really out of fashion, just for everyone to know. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, like... Like, um, back to you. Like yeah. Like a two that, rather than a T-W-O. That, that's real Not kind cool. of 1990s style <laughs> domain names. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of that kind of stuff. There, there are all those crazy things out there. If you're, if you're looking um, for domain names... I suggest, first of all, you look and see what you can get in .com. Look and see what you can get in your own country, uh, country level domain name. See what you can do in terms of keywords, and then see what you can do in terms of brandable, um, brandable stuff. And well, just to say, it's fairly straightforward if you already have a business name. If you and have you're a business trying name, to get that, basically. Yeah, you can usually you can usually get your business name, but sometimes um, you might have to put. Uh, like if you're a US based company and, and you call something um, like if you're called Blue Sky Publishing, uh, you might be able to get blueskypublishing.com, but you might be able to get Blue Sky Publishing LLC dot com. LLC being the, the kind of uh, limited company. Limited company. Yeah. yeah, or or in, in Ireland, the UK it's it's L T D. So you might be able to get that and, and stick that on the end of the name. Right, right. Uh, but you might be able to get something different, like you might be able to get usebluesky.com, or... Um, or if you're very local, like Blue Sky Publishing, CA for California, or something like that. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Right, right. Um, so, there's... It's... I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll add a few uh, pointers and links at the bottom of the video, and uh, one thing in particular that's useful is if you can get... Uh, even a few family members and a few friends around uh, basically just brainstorm a few ideas with a whiteboard and um, we also have another video on how to build up a list of keywords right. that builds up um, a bunch of keywords that you can check you can do a bulk search for domains it's one of the things that I use Put to find on there, yeah. yeah so I use that to find um, a bunch of different domain names so you can see stuff that might be useful so I'll link to that below this video as well there's a video uh, by Kevin Rose there one of the founders of Dig and lots of other uh, startups in the valley. And one of the things he does was he pretends he's he's typing it into his phone or he's checking a website on his phone. And he says to the person, oh, they go, what are you looking at? And he goes, nameofthewebsite.com. And they go, oh. And he goes, what do you think that's about? And that's where, we te where he tests it. Is that a good, you know, where they think he, it's it's not so, nothing to do with him. Right, so it right, takes him right. out of the equation. So they'll say, oh, that sounds like an awful website. It's never there. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a really cool sports website. You know, what does it infer? Yeah. Uh, so that can be another little trick to, uh, to, to use on people. So they give okay. you a more honest reaction rather than saying, I'm thinking of calling it X, Y. Yeah, that's, so, that's the problem with, with asking your friends. Uh, either they'll be over, overwhelmingly positive in their feedback or they'll be overwhelmingly negative. But you but want a more a, a kind of a cleaner a balanced reaction, yeah. a balanced reaction. Yeah. That could be one way of doing it. Yeah. So, okay, so that was that was some good stuff there.